Hello friends. Welcome back to Digital Goldmine. Not even two weeks have passed since the historic success of Chandrayaan-3 but ISRO is going to create history once again. Aditya L. Albert Mission. Today ISRO's eyes are not on the moon but towards the sun. Let us understand this mission in depth in today's video. Aditya L-1 is India's first mission which will specifically study the sun. But like Chandrayaan had landed on the surface of moon, Aditya will not land on the sun but will examine the sun from a distance. In fact, this spacecraft will be closer to the earth than the sun during the mission. After launch, it will go 15 lakh kilometers away from the earth and rotate in a round halo orbit after becoming Lagrange point L-1. It will take about four months from launch to reach that point and once reached, it will observe the sun for five years. Therefore, it is not only a spacecraft but also a space observatory. The first question that will come to your mind is what is this Lagrange point? Lagrange points. Friends, they are unique points in space where the additional force of two stainless steel bodies balances out. If we consider the sun and the earth here, then five Lagrange points are formed. On the screen you can see where these five Lagrange points are brought to. This is the point where if we send a spacecraft, the orbital motion of the spacecraft will cancel out the centrifugal force of the gravitational force of the Earth and Surat. What is the benefit of this? What happened? We get stability. We will send the spacecraft to Lagrange point. We will not have to make almost any effort to keep that spacecraft at that point. There will be fuel left for the spacecraft and that spacecraft will go round and round along with the round revolution of the Earth's mind. We'll keep rotating. Longer missions can also be done than this. Another advantage is the continuous observation. If we take the example of Lagrange point L1, anything that we send to L1 will continuously remain in such a position from where both the Earth and the Sun can be seen and the Sun or the Earth are never hidden between each other. Just think for yourself when we send a spacecraft into the lunar orbit like Chandrayaan was sent or send it into the Earth's orbit. The moon is round and round. Due to rotation the Earth gets hidden in the middle. Similarly, the Sun will also be hidden due to the Earth's rotation. That is why Lagrange points are so important and Aditya L1 will be placed in the L1 position. This is where its name Aditya L1 comes from. Even before this, other solar observatories sent by other space agencies have been placed on L1. Like Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. In short, SOHO. It was a joint mission between NASA and the European Space Agency. L1 and L2 are the most important Lagrange points because they are closest to the Earth. The famous James Webb Space Telescope was placed at L2 point. You can guess what is the reason. At L2 point the Earth will see the Sun behind itself and because this telescope has to see light year away to the depth of universe, it is necessary to hide the sunlight in the depths of the universe so that no interference can occur. Therefore, L2 points was chosen here. But getting back Aditya L1, what will it study about the sun? To understand this, we will first have to know a little about the sun. The diameter of the heart of our solar system is about 109 times larger than that of the Earth. It is 3, 33,000 times heavier than Earth. If you want to visualize the size of the Sun in comparison to the size of the Earth, you can see this animation, 1.3 million Earths can fit in a Sun. Just as there are different layers inside the Earth, core, mental, crust. Similarly, there are different layers inside the Sun as well. The Sun also has a core inside it. Nuclear fusion reactions take place inside this core where hydrogen and helium gas are converted into energy. This energy produces sunlight and emits heat which we feel on Earth too. The temperature of the core can go up to 15 million degrees Celsius. Just outside it is radioactive. Ozone is formed by 70% radius of sun's radiator zone and then 30% radius is formed by connectivity and proximity. It happens that is why it has been given this name. After this comes the surface of the union which we have named. There is also a photo. We call these two the surface, but in reality the Sun does not have any surface like the Earth's surface because only hot gas and plasma are present there, so it is also called the lowest layer of the Sun's atmosphere. The temperature here becomes quite cool. 
5000 degrees Celsius comes above it. The layer of the chrome sphere where the temperature starts rising starts at 6000 degrees Celsius and reaches 20,000 degrees Celsius at the top. Then there is a thin layer called transition region and after that goes the outermost layer of the sun which is called corona. This corona has nothing to do with that coronavirus. Very hot plasma is present in the corona layer about 1 to 2 million degrees Celsius. A question will come to your mind here that what is the reason that the core of the galaxy is so hot but the surface gets cooled and then the corona layer becomes so hot again. After all, what is the reason that the sun's core is so hot but the surface cools down and then the corona layer becomes so hot again? This question is still a mystery. It is possible that a Ditcher L1 space mission will reveal some secrets for the scientists. Scientists have made their own different theories. There is a reasoning behind this, but for sure no one knows yet what a fracture region is. When we look at the sun from the Earth, we see a layer of photosphere. But when a solar eclipse occurs, we see a radiant glow during a solar eclipse. That is a layer of chromosphere and in a total solar eclipse, that layer also disappears and only the corona layer is visible. It forms a faint halo around the sun. Aditya L1's mission is to study the top three layers of the sun. Photosphere, chromosphere and corona. But how will this be done millions of kilometers away from the sun? Before talking about the instruments present on it, we have to understand what things come out from the sun. First of all, we all know that hot and light come from the sun. This is a big exercise. Apart from this, every type of electromagnetic radiation comes out from the sun. This includes not only the visible light that we see with our eyes but also ultraviolet radiation which can cause skin cancer. Infrared radiation, radio waves, X-rays and gamma rays are also very harmful radiations. But our Earth's atmosphere protects them from them. But apart from all this, the solar wind emanating from the sun is a very big wave. This solar wind of charged electrons and protons interacts with the magnetic field of the Earth due to which we get to see the northern lights. This beautiful light is seen in the sky in countries like Sweden, Finland, Iceland. Apart from this, coronal mass ejections, CME, also come out from the sun during the day. These are very large particles of solar wind and magnetic field. Then sometimes from the sun come out huge intense flares of light and energy to the solar player. A solar flare is often used in many science fiction films, such as 2012 and Knowing, in which a massive solar flare occurs, destroying the entire world. Now to measure all these things, seven instruments have been installed on a Ditcher L1, which can be called seven payloads. The first, Visible Emission Line Coronagraph, or VELC in short. It will study the corona layer and observe the coronal mass ejections. The second, Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. In short, SUIT. It will take images of the Sun's photosphere and chromosphere, shot in the Circular Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope shot, in the ultraviolet spectrum. The third, SOLEXS and the fourth, HEL10S, both of them will study the X-rays emitted by the Sun. Especially, the X-rays emitted during solar flares. Fifth, Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment, in short, ASPECTS. And the sixth, Plasma Analyzer Package for Aditya, in short, PAPA. These two will study the solar wind. The last payload is the Magnetometer MAG, which is used to measure magnetic fields. The magnetic fields that reach this L1 point. Four out of these seven payloads will directly study the Sun and the remaining three payloads will take measures around the L1 point. By now, you must have understood that to take these measurements it is necessary to get out of the Earth because the Earth's atmosphere prevents a lot of radiation, X-rays and other things from reaching the Earth. Which is good for humans but not good enough to actually study them. Talking about the other missions related to the Sun, in 2018, NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe in collaboration with the European Space Agency. Its purpose was to make direct contact with the Sun's corona layer. Especially, to understand the harmful rays that are emitted by the Sun. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you found this video inspiring, please like, share, 
and subscribe for more stories of human exploration and achievement.